good morning again everyone i know i know that there's a bit of social distancing so please just wave at someone just wave at turn around and wave at someone and those of you joining us from home wherever you may be i pray that god will send his word into whatever location you are you are in right now and his word will bring grace and joy and life to you and that God will usher you into the new season which we can sense is bringing us into. Can I have an amen this morning? Amen. I know today is Thanksgiving, so but we want to share a word. And I'm praying that the word of God today would inspire faith in you and stir up something within you. To, so that your thanksgiving is genuine so it's not a religious obligation you're bringing before God but something that flows out of the abundance of your heart I have a message this morning it's called how long would you mourn how long would you mourn father we pray that the entrance of your word will bring light and life and wisdom your word is a lamp to our feet and a light to our path Lord give us a word a sure prophetic word confirmed in our hearts that we can hold on to until the day dawns and the morning star arises in our hearts give us insight into your will into your mind show us how to walk in your counsel show us how to walk in the footsteps of Jesus give us understanding of the thoughts of our God that we may walk alongside you O God Bring healing, bring wholeness, bring rejuvenation, revive us again. Bring your blessings into our lives and to all who are watching all over the world. Let your word kindle hope in their hearts as well. And let life be released wherever they are. And let your blessings rest on everyone. In Jesus' name I pray. Now the Lord said to Samuel, I mean 1 Samuel 16, 1 and 2, how long would you mourn for Saul? That's from where I got the title of my message, how long would you mourn? Seeing I have rejected him from reigning over Israel, fill your horn with oil and go. I am sending you to Jesse, the Bethlehemite, for I have provided myself a king among his sons. And Samuel said, how can I go? If Saul hears it, he will kill me. But the Lord said, take a ram with you and say, <clears throat> I have come to sacrifice to the Lord. My story this morning begins with the first king of Israel, Saul. Israel wanted a king to, they wanted to be like other nations. Even though God wanted to be their king. But they so yearned for a king, God gave them a king, gave them Saul. Saul was head and shoulders taller than anyone else in Israel. And in his early days, he did well. He did okay in his early days. But towards the end of his reign, Saul began to lose focus and lose direction. God had told Saul, I want you to kill all the Amalekites, destroy everything they own. But Saul kept the animals and kept Agag, the king of the Amalekites, alive. And God was just so upset with Saul. And then he would lie. And then towards his, his last days, he went to see a witch. He was now into witchcraft. He was into rebellion. And much later, he actually attempted to kill not just David, but he pinned his own son to the wall. Saul at this time was then tormented by an evil spirit. And so when we enter into the text this morning, we see Samuel is mourning. The prophet is weeping over Saul but God spoke to him and said how long would you mourn Samuel how long 
would you weep? How long would you be bitter? How long would you be stuck in the same place? How long would you be frustrated? How long would you be angry? How long would you mourn over something I, Jehovah, I have rejected? I have rejected Saul from being king over Israel. I have rejected Saul from reigning over your life. God was trying to get a message to Samuel. What God was saying is, Samuel, that thing that used to control you before will no longer control you. That thing that was boss over your life, its hold has been broken. Now, why don't you get your horn, fill it with oil, and go? Because I have found a man. Fill your horn with oil and go. It is time, Samuel, for you to up your game. See, as we can see, Samuel is in a transition. It was he who anointed Saul as king. He had great expectations from Saul. But over the years, he had been so disappointed. He had become fed up and was grieving. But God was saying, but Samuel, I am changing the season. Why are you still mourning? Samuel was in a difficult place. The end of one king and the beginning of another. So in a sense, Samuel was navigating a transition. And God was trying to help Samuel get through the transition. The same way I've come to say to you that as God's people, we also are in a transition. 2020. Some did okay in 2020. But for many people, it was a very difficult year. I just spoke about the wellness center we're opening. In the past, my area of focus was addiction medicine, drug addiction. But in the past year, or in the past few months, we've seen a lot of people because of COVID go through anxiety, go through depression, go through some mental health issues. So we want to set up a foremost mental health center in this country. We want to be able to destigmatize these areas that people are suffering from silently. So 2020 was difficult, but 2021 is like our year of transition. And God was saying to Samuel, how long would you mourn? How long would you weep? I'm getting ready to do something, but you're still crying. You're tied up to what I have rejected. You're holding on to a season that I have shut down. I want to give you a new heart on the matter. I want to give you a new perspective of this situation, Samuel. Is anyone hearing me today? Don't try to keep alive what I'm trying to kill Samuel, I want you to be in agreement with me. Can two walk together except they be agreed? How can I walk with you, Samuel, if you're not in agreement with me? And it looks like, Samuel, you're letting your emotions get in my way. Why are you crying over what I have rejected? In Ecclesiastes chapter 3, 1, he says, To everything, there is a season and a time to every purpose under heaven. Verse 4 says, There is a time to weep and a time to laugh. 
There is a time to mourn and a time to dance. He says there is a time to cast away stones and a time to gather stones. A time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing. So God was saying to Samuel, why are you crying when I'm not crying? Why are you embracing a season when I have refrained from embracing that season? And that's why the Bible says, walk in the spirit and you will not fulfill the desires of the flesh. Samuel was in the flesh. As many as are led by the spirit of God, they are the sons of God. And for a long time, we preached sonship. Today I'm speaking to sons. God wants us to walk with him in every situation. When he led Israel, he led them with a pillar of cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night. Why was it not a pillar of cloud at night? So they could see even in the dark. So even in times of darkness, God still helps us. Isaiah 50 verse 10 says, Is there anyone amongst you who fears the Lord, who obeys the voice of his servant, but who is walking in darkness and has no light? He says, what are you supposed to do? Trust in the Lord and rely upon your God. Even in the darkness, God never, ever abandons us. So God is speaking to Samuel. Samuel, why are you weeping? Why are you messing up, Samuel? Yes, I know you've seen some pretty terrible things from Saul. Yes, he was into witchcraft. He was a murderer. But I'm about to change everything. And now I'm about to change things. You are not walking in sync with me. Don't cry over what I've rejected. I found a man. It's a new season. Get your horn. Get your oil. Get back your strength. Get anointed. And let's go anoint the future. Today I bring a prophetic word. I stand as God's prophet today. And may this word stir up something in your heart. Like Samuel, we have to understand the ways of God. Never forget that it is they who understand the ways of God, who have strength. And who can then go forward and do exploits. What God was trying to teach Samuel is what he's trying to teach us. That when God judges something, its death comes slowly. God told Adam and Eve, in the day that you eat of this, the fruit of this tree, you will die. But the earth, did they die on that day? death had started you could go to a plant or a flower and pluck off a branch with a flower on it put it in a, in a vase do you know the leaves may still bloom for a while the leaves may spread out it may even blossom but you know it's dead you cut off the head of a snake and you're not careful. The tail still thrashes for a while. But you know it is dead. One day Jesus was walking with his disciples. Saw a fig tree. Tried to get some fruit. Found no fruit. And he cursed it. He said, from now, let no man eat of you forever. The disciples heard it. They thought, the master was just being funny. And they just said, you know, he does weird things. 
Then they passed by that way the next day and they saw that the fig tree had dried up. They said, Rabbi, the tree that you cursed is dead. Because when God says something, it takes a period of time where it looks like nothing is happening. In fact, things may get worse. God said to Pharaoh, God said to Moses, tell Pharaoh, let my people go. The first time Moses addressed Pharaoh, guess what Pharaoh did? He increased their work. He said, idle, idle, you guys are lazy. I used to give you cement before you made the bricks. Now you go get the cement and make the same number of bricks. So when Moses went to the camp in Goshen, and spoke to the Israelites, said, Moses, since you came, please just go. Our trouble is worse. They also did not understand the principles of God. Ecclesiastes 3.11 says, in his time, he makes all things beautiful. So if you would wait a while, put yourself together, get your faith up what God has said he will do he will do what God has said will come to pass will come to pass so God said I have rejected Saul but Saul is still on the throne Saul is even going to get worse but God is saying go and anoint David but you are still crying over Saul. And where is David? He's in the backside of the wilderness. Meanwhile, Saul is still threatening and making decrees. Yet his reign has been rejected by God. Do you see the ways of God? A God who would take Moses, the deliverer, and hide him in the house of Pharaoh, the enemy, and get his mom to be his nurse, and they paid his mom to take care of him. The ways of God are past finding out. I have rejected Saul, but Saul is still speaking. Saul is still ruling, but his reign has been rejected. That's why today I've come to prophesy to someone some things that operated in your past God is bringing to an end today God is saying it is finished he sent me to tell you it is over it is done but that Adam was alive when God said thou shalt surely die it meant he shall surely die Today, hear me again. God is bringing some things to an end in your life. He is saying it is over. Depression, you are done. Anxiety, I have rejected you. Defeat, it is over now. Let me hear you say it is over. Sickness, it's over. Discouragement, it's over. Poverty, Barrenness, fear, anger, weeping, it's over. I pray that God will give you understanding of this word. I pray that God will give you insight into what he's doing. But that thing may still be trying to operate in your life. It may be sitting on the throne. But God says it is over. Did you hear what I said? That thing may still be fighting, but it's over. It may still be talking. It is finished. It may still be fighting, but it's over. It may still be shouting, but it's over. It's just a matter of time. In 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 19, God told, Peter said, so we have a prophetic word confirmed. And that's why everyone here, 
You will do well to heed, to hide a prophetic word in your heart because it is like light that shines in a dark place. And you hold on to that word until the day dawns and the morning star arises in your heart. God told Cain, the ground is cursed for your sake. You can dig it, you can water it, you can plant, it will not bring forth fruit. It's over. I've come to prophesy to you the same way. Some things the enemy used to do in your life, he will no longer be able to do in your life. He can dig, but it's over. He can plant, but it's over. He may bring flashes of the past into your life now. It's over. He may torment you what happened in the past. It's over. If God says it's over, it's over. And you have to have faith to believe what God has said. Because what he has said will come to pass because he says it and he does it. So I want to encourage someone today. Stop crying over that thing. Stop wrestling with it. Oh, I prophesy to you that reign of terror is over in your life in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Yet it took a while before Saul died on the field of battle. But heaven has declared it. I stand on the behalf of heaven, bringing declarations to the earth today. Remember, when Israel was about to cross into the promised land, God told Joshua, tell the priests to step into the Jordan. And to stand in the raging waters. And do you remember the story? The moment they stepped in, in a city called Adam, 18 miles away from where they stepped in, the water, there was a, a water, there was a, maybe bricks or blocks or a mountain, mountain slide. The water was blocked. And they had to wait for 18 miles of water to flow past. But the point is, Somewhere in Adam, beyond the places of your sight, beyond the places of your understanding, beyond the places of your senses, the miracle has taken place. But what do you do? Oh, you stand believing. You stand rejoicing. You stand waiting. Please hear me today as I speak into your life I curse those tumors in your life I curse those cancers in your life I curse those addictions in your life I curse those fears in your life dry up in the name of Jesus I curse the sickness in your life everything that God has not planted I uproot it in the name of our Lord Jesus I stand against the works of the enemy in your life. I pray for you. I pray for your marriage. I pray for your children. I call for restoration. We shut down the old season and we call for the new. Oh, today may you be filled with the strength, the horn of your salvation. May you fill the horn of your salvation with the oil of the anointing. And may the anointing break yokes and lift burdens in the name of Jesus. May you be propelled into a new season of grace, of power, of authority. May you run through a troop and leap over a wall. May your hands break a bore of steel. Oh, may your feet be like the feet of gazelles on mountain top. May you stand on the craggy hills of testing. May you soar. May you soar above the mountains of trouble like an eagle. This is your season. May faith rise up in your heart so that you begin to lift your hands and give God praise. Oh, someone give God praise. Someone give God praise. Hallelujah. Listen, someone give God praise. Like Samuel, so many of us have been boxed in. So many of us have been bruised and battered. So many of us have been tormented. Now God is saying the season is changing. But you are still mourning. God is saying how long would you mourn? How long would you cry? How long would you be frustrated? 
How long would you be hopeless? How long would you be helpless? I've come to help you. I've come to strengthen you. I've come to inspire you. I've come to anoint you. I've come to stir up something in your heart. Get your horn, fill it with oil and go. Oh, shahabari kabasuta bahata. So there is deliverance. We're breaking out of that darkness. I say that dark season is over in your life. The light has come and the light shines in the darkness and the darkness cannot comprehend it. Oh, arise and shine for your light has come. Arise and shine for your revelation has come. Arise and shine, there's a new anointing. Oh, shalabos kebata bahala Sit down for a few moments. Let me share a little testimony that happened during the lockdown. I have a cousin of mine who lives in the UK. His daughter is 18 years and um, they diagnosed with cancer of the foot. And I think he called me like on a Friday and said that she was scheduled for an amputation on Monday, Monday morning. Um, and I said, okay. Oh, yeah, I said, well, you know, I'm a doctor, so let me ask a few questions. Let me pray with her and find out where she is and encourage her. And so we planned the next day and we met and we spent some time and we prayed, very emotional time, and we prayed and did Holy Communion together. And so um, they went and I spoke and prophesied and then they went to, went for the supposed amputation and he was very distressed about it. He said, she's a very young girl, how's it going to affect her life? He called me on Monday afternoon and said, Tony, because my pastor said, Pastor Tony, you wouldn't believe this. They found there was a new diagnosis. He said, that's what they said. But he said, I knew God healed my daughter. On the day of the amputation, they said, we got a wrong diagnosis. He said something and they could manage it conservatively. It was no longer malignant. I curse everything in your body that God has not planted in the name of our Lord Jesus. There will be testimonies from this message. Testimonies of God's healing power, God's grace, every sickness, every disease, hypertension, diabetes, I curse you from your roots. Jesus was wounded for our transgression. He was bruised for our iniquity. The chastisement that brought us peace, the punishment necessary to give us peace was laid upon him and by his stripes we were healed. He himself bore our sins in his body on a tree that we being dead to sin might live unto righteousness. By whose stripes ye were healed. Ye were healed. Rise up and begin to celebrate the healing power of God in your life. Someone lift your hand and give God praise. Someone lift your hand and give God praise. God told the Israelites, says, look back, take a look at those Egyptians. He said, look at them very well. It's the last time you're going to see them. It's the last time you'll see them alive because I'm bringing them under the Red Sea. And bring them under the power of my Holy Spirit. And he says the wind blew all that night. There is a wind blowing in your favor. I said the wind of the Holy Spirit is blowing your favor. Supernatural doors would open in the name of our Lord Jesus. Are you a believer? I am talking to believers. If they are believers, lift your voice and give God praise. saying I got I got born again about 29 and 30 got married at 30 and um, and thereafter the Lord took us through a very difficult time my wife and I living in my in my parents apartment in a house in in Surulere, very difficult times I'm sure I was the only medical doctor who couldn't get a job in the whole world at the time so we depend on Mrs. Rapper's income at that time 
We just didn't have any money. Then when the kids came, we just didn't have any money. You know, in those days we would we would go and get sugar and milk on credit from the Megad. The only cars we had was cars our parents had given us. And shortly after, I <laughs> gave them away. <laughs> And I remember the first time I preached a message on prosperity, I didn't have the right clothes to wear. I didn't have a suit. So I went to Pastor Gandhi. And he lent me one of those nice, snazzy blazers. <laughs> and I preached prosperity. Like I was living in it. We called my daughter. We gave her a prophetic name on Nonu June. Because things were hard. But we gave her a non meaning you're born in the midst of plenty, even though there was nothing. But that morning in Roxas Cinema, I preached prosperity. I knew that I knew that I knew it was over with poverty. I knew a season of prosperity was coming, no matter how long it took. At the time, she was came and said, "Oh, Pastor Tony Marshall, you know what a shame! I remember when you were, you know." I said, "I said, can you see yourself?" I said to her, "Can you see yourself driving a jeep?" She said, "No." I said, "I can see myself driving many. Get out of my way." I used to say then, "If you take everything I have and take me, put me in Kalahari Desert, come back six months, you'll find Ishmaelites carry me on a hammock." <laughs> Because there's a grace that comes from the inside. There's something that wells up from the inside. I know who my, who I am. I know who I am. I know whom I serve. Poverty is over in your life. A new season has started in your life. A season of increase, of blessings, of favor, of mercy. Oh, come and raise your hand and give God praise this morning. Someone give God praise. Someone give God praise. Hallelujah. Many things in your life are being rejected today. I said many things in your life are being rejected. But like Samuel, you have to walk in faith. Crossover 2019. God gave me a message that turned out to be a prophecy. That program went viral. That clip went viral. I got so many invitations, but I turned them all down. In fact, I'd agreed to, to speak at a, an event. When I saw the flyer, the man who saw tomorrow, <laughs> I said, no, no, I said, no, that's, that's not my style. Someone called me from the UK and said a Danish boy in the, in the office sent her, a Nigerian, the message I had preached <laughs> 31st night. And what was that message? I said, stay in the house until the plague be passed. Stay in the house. But now, I've come to tell you, it's over. <laughs> I don't know how many of you saw COVID. I don't know how many prophets were accurate. But God told me to say, stay in the house. Now he's telling me, get your horn, fill with oil, and go. Hey! It's done. I say it's done. I say it's over. Fill your horn with oil and go. 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 And go. Fill your horn with oil and go. Fill your horn with oil and go. What? 
But hold on. But an unbeliever may say to you, he's still on the throne. <laughs> you have the word from God. They may tell you there's a second wave. They may tell you there's a new variant which is more virulent. Was Pharaoh not more virulent after God had said, let my people go. Let my people go. <laughs> Fill your horn with oil and go. It's just a matter of time. It's just a matter of time. Am I saying don't wear a mask? No. Am I saying don't practice social distancing? No. Am I saying don't practice hygiene? No. What am I saying? Fill your heart with oil and go. Hey! How many of you believe if believe is over? Now raise your hands and let's speak into the atmosphere and curse every root of coronavirus. We curse it in the name of our Lord Jesus. We say it's just a matter of time. It's just a matter of time. We curse you from its roots. We stand against the demonic powers that want to use it to move people into fear, oppression, and depression. It is a new season. It is a new season. And we call for the new in the name of our Lord Jesus. You may, you may please be seated. First Samuel 26 verse 10. When David had a chance to kill Saul, the old, you know what he said? He said, that's not my job. He said, as the Lord lives, so let me give you three ways in which he will go. The Lord shall strike him, one. Two, his day shall come to die. Or three, she go to battle and perish. And that's what happened. He said, whichever way, God has spoken it. God has anointed me. God will take care of it. Mine is just to protect my strength, protect my anointing, and do what God has asked me to do. Is anyone getting this message? What does horn speak of in the Bible? Horn speaks of strength, the horn of my salvation. What does oil speak of in the Bible? The anointing. So what, what is God saying to you? Receive strength. Be strengthened and get anointed. Get your strength back. Get your anointing from God's presence. So don't allow depression to control your emotions. Don't allow what God has rejected to now dictate terms to you. Let me begin to close. In 1 Samuel 16 verse 2, Samuel said to God, How can I go? If Saul hears, he will kill me. But the Lord said, Take a heifer, take a ram. And um, when you get there, you tell the people, um, <laughs> we're, having a sack, we're having a party. He said, But you know where you're going. What Samuel was asking is, How can I anoint a new king when the old one is still on the throne how can I anoint my future when I'm still struggling with my past how can I you want me to operate in a new dimension when the old is still very much on the throne how can I call those things that be not as though they are but that's what God wants us to do. How can I walk in healing when my back is still hurting? When my knees are still weak? Today I want to speak to you if you're listening to this message you're in a hospital, a clinic, a, a mental health, psychiatric home. Let faith be kindled in your heart. See the future. See what God is saying and begin to declare it. That's why the Bible says, let the weak say, I am strong. He didn't say, let the strong say, I am strong. Because we are to call those things 
that be not as though they were and then they become. Let the poor, not, not let the rich say I am rich. Let the poor say I am rich. In Isaiah 54 verse 1, God gave a message. He said, sing, O barren, you who have not born. Break forth into singing, cry aloud. You have not labor with child. More are the children of the desolate than even the children of the married one. These are the ways of God. My job today is to just to prophesy fruitfulness, to prophesy blessings, to prophesy expansion, to prophesy increase. So what do I do? What do I do? When I'm struggling, I'm in transition, I'm struggling with that which God has rejected. How do I manage Saul? That's why I want to pray for you now for strategy. I'm not saying tell a lie, but may God give you wisdom for the rest of 2021 as we manage the transition. May God reposition you. May God bring you accuracy. May God make you sensitive. May he give you discernment. I pray for eyes that see in the dark. My message is simple today. As I conclude, I've just come to say, David is coming. Stop crying. So turn to someone, just point to them and tell them, David is coming, stop crying. But, but where was David? What was he doing? What do you think he was doing in the wilderness? Singing. Worshipping. Where do you think his strength came from? When he told Saul later, he said, Saul, a bear came to steal my father's sheep. A lion came. He said, I will go after them, take the sheep, and if they turned against me by the anointing, I smote them. But the Lord is your light and your salvation. Whom shall you fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? Oh, just lift your hand and give God thanks today. Just give Him thanks. Sing a song. By faith, let's usher in a new season. May God anoint you today as you sing. May God increase your strength as you worship. Today there is a new anointing. Burdens are being lifted. Yokes have been destroyed. There is an anointing for breakthrough. The oil of the Spirit is flowing. Raise your hand and say, God, fill me, fill me with. Anoint me for the new. Anoint me. I don't know what it is you need from God. Talk to Him now. Anoint me with power. There is a new anointing. This anointing will give you boldness. This anointing will give you courage. God is calling us back to a fearless 2021 and a fearless 2022. Listen, when God says to Samuel, take the oil, fill it. Take the horn, fill it with oil and anoint David. Why? Because it takes the supernatural to execute the natural. It takes something in the spirit to turn around something in the natural. That's why you've got to be anointed. So my brother, my sister, fill your horn with oil and go. There's going to be a shift with this new anointing. I prophesy to someone, you're going to be anointed to do what you were not even qualified to do. They say you cannot have it, but the anointing will bring it to you. 
It's time to go to the embassy again. It's time to talk to your bank manager again. It's time to be bold again. Expect that phone call again. Somehow, someone will say to you, we don't know why, but we just feel you are the one we need to give this job to. We don't know why, but there's favor. Listen, this anointing is bringing favor to someone. Oh, I see doors. Doors will open on their own accord. Opportunities are coming. Oh, shahalabakuda basti kevaha. For God, for what God will do for the rest of the year. You've got to be full. You've got to be full. I want you, please listen to me. Lift your hands and say, Lord, fill me. Let me tell you why. You cannot be full of oil and be full of fear at the same time. You cannot be full of oil and be full of hate. You cannot be full of oil and be full of depression. You cannot be full of oil and be full of anxiety. Raise your hands and say, Lord, fill me. Oh, it's time to be fill it up. Fill up the anointing before you attend those meetings, whether physically or on Zoom. Fill up before you go to a meeting. The overflow is here. The overflow is here. The overflow is here.